freshman football players and parents. This is Coach Graff and Coach Conalog. Uh, we just wanted to take some time tonight and thank each and every one of you for the season that you guys put in and the support that you as parents showed us. This will go down for sure as one of the craziest uh, mm -hmm. years in the history of high school sports. The adversity that these kids had to deal with, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that it was unprecedented to have their season canceled and then start again and then canceled again and then have games canceled and practices canceled. Coaches missing. Coaches out, yeah. players out. It just everything that you could throw at a group of kids, uh, this virus threw, it at, threw at them, and they, through all of it, were coachable, positive, worked their butts off. I mean, it's just what an incredible honor it was to coach these kids, and I mean that. I mean, it's... I've coached now for six years, and a lot of kids would have folded. Mm -hmm. The second they said, well, football's probably not going to happen, it would have been over, right? These kids, the second they, re they restarted se the season, we had 30 kids in the weight room that night. Yep. And that's awesome. And that's why this group is going to do some unbelievably great things here in the next three years. I have no doubt about it. Um, they were so fun to be around, too. That was the other thing. I really, really just like being around this group of kids. They're funny, um, they're smart, they're weird. I mean, it, it was a really, really good group. You know, you take Donovan Mann, who's gonna, you know, be a physicist someday, and Gavin Turner, who's probably not gonna be a physicist someday, you know? I mean, and that's that was a fun, fun dynamic and a fun group to be around. Uh, Coach, anything you wanna add just to the overall season? Uh, no, I just thought we did a great job with adversity, yeah. um, you know? Love all the kids, you know, from yes, from Chris Lundine, you know, yeah, having his music and Preston mm -hmm. dancing. Um, yeah, just, just a great, great group of kids. So fun to be around. I mean, I it's hard to most football seasons are filled with controversy and negativity, and I want this playing time, and we just didn't have that really as no. a team, and that was so refreshing and. And I think it's partly because these guys have played together since they were, you know, two years old or whatever. And so they know each other, they, they're friends with each other, they can fight the way only really good friends can, where you'll say just like horrific things to one another, but you'll somehow still love each other. And so it was great to be a part of that. And I think, I've said it to you guys, when you guys are juniors and seniors and you're carrying a gold ball, I know that Coach Conalog and Coach Chambers and I are gonna feel good that we gotta just be a little part of this here when you guys were freshmen. So uh, thank you guys. and. Thanks again to the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, the parents. God, yeah. you guys were patient. This year was not easy as a parent, I am sure, to have to, well, is my kid going to get to play football or not? And do we have practice or not? Is this game going to happen? And that was a weekly thing. And you guys were so great about being positive and supporting us as a coaching staff and supporting your kids. So just thank you guys uh, so much for all of that. And, uh, and again, that's part of the reason Erie football is such a special thing because we have great parents who support our kids. Got uh, some awards to get to here, right? Yeah, yeah. So we got uh, a lot of awards that we're going to get to. Um, the first is going to be our Offensive MVP Award. Um, this award is, of course, going to go to the kid who really made our offense kind of go, right? Without him, I don't think we have the kind of season that we do. And Coach Conalog will talk about him at first. Yeah, so uh, coming into the season, you know, it's really tough when we uh, lose our quarterback that they've had for, forever. what, forever? Forever, you know? yeah. Um, varsity snags him up. Uh, he's, a great he's a great athlete. So we have a huge hole to fill. Yeah. Um, and I remember those first couple of uh, summer practices were like, man, who are we, we going to throw right. in there? Right. Um, and then we got shut down, and our quarterback that we kind of had lined up was – in golf season, so yeah. we needed somebody to step up so we could start repping plays and start yeah, um, just being a team, you know, as an offense. And this kid stepped up and became just an outstanding player for us. Um, if we didn't have him there, uh, I don't think we put up as many points. No way. For, Absolutely. For sure. Um, and, uh, you know, he showed great, tremendous team spirit by – Hopping in there, because yeah. um, you know, like well, like we said, he wasn't a quarterback, and he hopped in there. I don't know how many touchdowns he threw. Yeah, quite a few, and he right. uh, 
He ran the ball well, very effective for us. Yeah. Um, you know, and when he switched over to quarterback, he had to give up a little bit of a defense time, you know, because that's a commitment. Um, yeah, for, as a defensive coach, I was depressed because he was he's going to be a great safety eventually for the program. But the offense stole him because they needed him, and coach is exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so our offensive MVP this year is going to be uh, Kave. And, Kave, thank you for what you did for this team this year. You did a great job. Um, very coachable kid yeah. and uh, amazing job. Yeah, the, the only thing I would add about Kave and, uh, is that – I never once saw him get flustered or angry or point the finger at his teammates. And that's a really hard thing for a young quarterback to do. I think it's really easy to say, well, block line and do that. And Kave just doesn't do that kind of stuff. And I think the kids rallied around him. Tremendous leader. He's a great leader, uh, just a really positive kid. I remember one time in particular where the summer workouts were – they were on and off again and on and off again. And he was the guy I noticed that was keeping everybody positive and was keeping everybody going and talking to the other kids. And And those are qualities that you can't coach. You're either a leader or you're not. Yep. And Kave is definitely a leader. He has those qualities. And so, again, Jacko, what Coach said, just thank you again, Kave. And that's why he's a well-deserving offensive MVP. So now we're going to move to my side of the ball, the best side of the ball, yeah, yeah, the yeah. defensive side of the ball. Um, I uh, had a really hard time choosing any one player. We gave up 37 points the entire season. That's ridiculous, right? And most of those, with the exception of that stupid Brighton game, came... We don't talk about that. Well, yeah, which we won't talk about too much tonight. Most of those came at the very end of the game in kind of last-minute plays, those kind of things. So we were a dominant defensive football team. And that's because we had 11 guys working together and doing their jobs perfectly. So that's why it was so hard for me to choose any one player. So having said that, I just everybody who played defense this year, thank you guys. We accomplished a, a lot as a unit. And I know that they're excited to have you guys up at the next level. Uh, I've talked to Coach Cooper and to – the JV coaches, and they can't wait to get you guys because this is going to be a great defensive group for years to come. I have no doubt about that. But when it comes to picking a defensive MVP, I settled on two kids. I couldn't get it down just to one. I, I wanted to give it to like 13 kids, and Coach Conalog got me to work it down to at least <laughs> two. So I chose two kids who played defense almost exclusively, and both of these kids were just absolutely – excellent at their jobs, right? And so the first is uh, Jackson Calgill, who was a defensive end for us. And I went back and watched some of our films, uh, some of our game films from this year. And Coach Conalog and I were talking about it the other night. Teams simply could not yeah, block he's him. He's unblockable. Yeah, much. and yeah. when you have, as an offensive line, when you just cannot block a kid, everything is disrupted right from the beginning. Right, we always defensively won the line of scrimmage because he, and also because John and Geo and Keegan and all the great defensive linemen we had, it wasn't just Jackson, but Jackson truly, I mean, people could not deal with him. He was so disruptive to what other teams were trying to do that uh, we were always ahead of the game. I thought defensively because of that. I wish I had all the stats in front of me, but more importantly than any statistical number I could give you was is that fact that week in and week out, we had a player who the other team simply couldn't block. And uh, he's going to be a dominant defensive lineman in the next few years as he gets uh, older and he gets stronger. He's already a freakazoid. I mean, when he first showed up in the summer, I'm like, this kid has to be like 35 years old. <laughs> I mean, that's what he looks like. But he's whatever they are. What are they, 13, 14? He's only going to get better. Um, so Jackson, thanks for everything this year. Uh, I couldn't say enough about your productivity on the field, your work ethic every single day in practice, without exception. We start practice by running laps. So you would dust everybody. Everybody. It wasn't even close. Yeah. He was 100 yards ahead of everybody else. Just tremendous work ethic. He, uh, We thought we lost him early in the season. His hand was poofed up to be this big, and he came back and played through that. I Just I can't say enough about him. So that's one of our two defensive MVPs. 
The other guy on the opposite side of the physical size spectrum is uh, Preston Terranova, who was a corner for us this year and was every bit as dominant as Jackson was, just in a diff totally different way, right? He plays a different position. He has a different job. But he was a lockdown corner. I was thinking about it before I came over here this year, and teams completed two passes against him. And one of them was against Windsor, where a kid literally had to reach over the top of him and snag it away. And, and then the other one was in that godforsaken Brighton game that we're all going to forget. So the point is, is that he was a truly locked down corner and kind of the old school sense of Champ Bailey, just this guy's not going to get open against this kid. My favorite is the kind of tackler he was. Yes. He would, he, no matter yeah. how small he was, he'd come up and he would tackle anybody. Anybody, yeah. Literally exactly. anybody. So he might have been the best tackler on our I think squad, so. so. I think so. And eventually teams started to not run to that side yep. of the field. Because our little, you know, three foot four corner was just completely <laughs> dominant on the outside and was not letting people get outside of us. So again, um, those are the two guys that uh, we decided as the defensive MVPs. But we could have given that award to a lot of other people. And I want everybody who played defense uh, to know how much I appreciated you guys. It was so fun to coach you. I was talking to one of our players, uh, Abram Yoder, during one game, and he said, you know, you don't really talk that much when we're on defense. I said, what am I supposed to say? We get them second and 15, and then they're third and 20, and then they punt. I mean, what am I supposed to say about that? So uh, it was easy to coach you guys. You guys made my life easy. And we were really successful, I think, this year. Really smart defense. Really smart, you exactly. You know, um, yeah. Uh, the coverages. I know the game that I had to come in mm -hmm. and uh, do a defensive coordinator job for Jordan. Your secondary helped me out so much just yeah. by knowing the coverages. Oh my um, gosh! Yeah. You know they knew it before I knew it. So. So that's the defensive side of the ball. Uh, thank you guys again, and uh, we're going to talk now about special teams. And Coach Conalog is going to talk about our uh, special teams MVP. This kid's a special kid, and is going to help all kinds of sports in at Erie High School here over the next few years. So, Yeah, this kid had it tough. Um, you know, I personally know nothing about kicking. I don't Me know neither. what Not your a single background thing. is on that. Yeah. Um, I told him to kick it hard a few yeah, times. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so this kid, he didn't have a coach. He, we weren't allowed to send him over um, and kick field goals over on the varsity field. Right. Right. Um, we would – see him over there and he would just be punting by himself, right. mm -hmm. you know, and doing kickoffs by himself while we're doing other stuff. And to his credit, he never stopped, you know. Right. Like he yeah. could have just as easily came over and started came watching practice. practice. Yep. yep, he mm -hmm. was there at every practice. Yep. Was a tremendous teammate, um, you know, in every single conditioning. Yep. I remember our very first kickoff of the year, I'm pretty sure he had a touchback. Yep, absolutely. He, you know, he just mm -hmm. comes in and – Puts it through the end zone. We're like, yep. well, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, looks like we got ourselves a kicker. Yes, um, 100%. You know, and then uh, what was it? The Windsor game. Mm -hmm. Windsor game, we'll, your guy Preston yeah. tells him, hey, let's do an onside kick. There's nobody yeah. there. Right. Calls it himself. Does mm -hmm. an onside kick. They recover it, you know. So that's just some heads up smart plays um, that he made. Yep. Um, for And he impacted a bunch of games for not being in that much. Yeah. Um, and that is our kicker, Tyler. You did a great job. Yeah, some things I would say about Tyler. Uh, you can't underestimate how important field position is in football. Yeah. And when every single time we, as an offense, are starting out on the opponent's 40 and they're starting out on their 10 or 20 or whatever it is, that's is, you've already won some of the biggest battles that you're going to fight as a defense or offense. And Tyler consistently put us in good field position as a kickoff player. And then the thing I loved about the kid, I mean, every time we did a full contact to the ground tackling yeah. drill, yep. he came over this. and hopped in. I mean, like, there's no kicker in America who hops into Oklahoma drills, but Hoffman would play every single time. I mean, he never was going to get in the game and have to tackle people, but he did it. And the kid is just a, a rock star. You know, I, he probably could have helped at the older levels, kicking-wise. Thank God they couldn't take him because we needed him. And uh, we love you, Tyler, and thanks for all that you did this year, buddy, and uh, we really appreciate you. Um, so we're going to move on now to a couple of different kind of awards. 
Um, the next one is going to be called the Tenacious Tiger Award, and it's something that I know Coach Chambers and Coach Conalog have given out in years past. And I'll let Coach Conalog explain why we're giving this to the kids that we are. But really, this is an award that is given to kids who made big sacrifices as teammates, who did things that were selfless, that put the team before themselves, and really, in that sense, made us a better unit because of their willingness to sacrifice. So Coach Conalog will talk about that. But this Tenacious Tiger Award, I just want to say that we would not have had a successful season without the kids that were willing to make these sacrifices. So we're going to have uh, three recipients of this award. Um, and a little background first, I guess, is um, we came into the season – and we split up into individuals for that very first time, and I had uh, three offensive linemen over in our drills. Right. For those of you that don't know, it takes uh, five offensive linemen at least right. on every play. To, yeah, you'd prefer yeah, six or is, seven or yeah, eight. This is in a yeah. six-man or eight-man football, yeah, yeah. you know. So mm -hmm. um, we did it for a couple weeks um, or like a week or two yeah. trying to figure out who we're going to move over there to help us out or thinking maybe we're going to get some more kids in. Yep. Yeah. Um, Nobody showed up, and we got shut down the first time, and we came back, and we're like, okay, we're going to have to – have to find We line. have to make a move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the first kid I want to talk about, he's the first kid we moved. Um, and when you look at him, it's easy to see why, because the kid's just an absolute unit yeah. of a kid. Mm -hmm. um, big, strong, fast, you know. Uh, he was at the running back position. Right. And I know uh, Coach Chambers was super – Angry when I said, "Hey, we gotta, we gotta move him." Yeah. Um, yeah. So because he could be a running back too. Yeah, I mean, he mm -hmm. he could have played running. Every yeah. single one of these kids I'm about to talk about could have contributed on any other spot on offense, yeah. almost. You know. Yeah, that's right. Um, and that's just a, a huge shout out to those kids. Yeah, what know? a sacrifice. Yeah, sacrifice. Yeah. So, um, but I went to I went to this kid. I said, "Hey, like, we need you to." come play guard for us right i was like i promise you're gonna have some fun because you're gonna be able to pull around and you're gonna be able to hit some people and he, did he ever on, oh my god i mean that yeah. first Greeley west game mm -hmm. yeah it was just unbelievable yeah. when he got out in space i think he just teetotaled probably five or six I mean, kids true you know? pancake yeah. blocks i mean two in open bad. field on yeah. on a pole mm -hmm. yeah yeah um and there's times where he's been he was driving kids uh 10, 15 yards downfield. That's crazy. You know? So mm -hmm. he's just uh, – I know he says he doesn't want to be there next year, but um, the first Nation Tiger Award goes to Keaton Strange. Yes. Um, if you don't be an offensive lineman next year, I'll be a little hurt, but I understand, you know. He's going to be dominant wherever he wherever plays. Wherever he plays, he's going to he's gonna be dominant. Uh, he was so. an unbelievable linebacker for us too. So. Yeah. Uh, the next kid that ended up moving over to us, um, this kid could have played wide receiver. He could have played H. Yeah. Uh, he could have played outside wide receiver, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. There was a practice where um, Cave and Keegan weren't there, and we're like, well, we got to run plays for yeah, offense. He was the quarterback. So, yep, yeah. so we threw – we're like, hey, Gio, do you want to come learn quarterback today? Mm -hmm. And um, he said, yep. He stood in there, and he tried to learn some yep. power-o reads. Yeah. Um, I know we had three guys that day working there. Right, um, yeah, yeah, I remember that. So, but, yeah, this kid, he could have played anywhere. He's, Probably one of the best athletes out there on the field. Unquestionable. Um, and he ended up playing left tackle for us. Uh, this kid was coachable, and I know he got frustrated at times playing there. Yeah. Um, you know, he just he's a defensive lineman at heart, and we yeah. got it when he was on offense. Sometimes he still went back to his defensive lineman ways. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, he had four weeks to learn. Yeah. But he never gave up, and without him playing left tackle for us, we would have been in trouble, I think. 100%. So, um, this uh, the other recipient is Geo. Uh, Geo, I'm not gonna Geo lie. Geo Capra. Capra. Geo That's, Capra. There yeah. It is. I was, the, the I was thing, a little nervous. No. Yeah. Things, no. So. I. Yeah. I. The only thing I would add, everything Coach said was perfect. Geo, we had we, as coaches, we were worried about asking these kids to move to offensive line because this was a group. They're so talented. They want to be playmakers and. We, and they could have been. And they that's could have. That's they, yeah, they, exactly. They could have been playmakers exactly. at it's, those positions. It's not like they couldn't play receiver or running back. Of course they could have. But Gio was the easiest conversation, I think. Just, Gio, you're moving to tackle. Okay, I'll do whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of kid he is. Um, of course, I have to 
shout out to his defensive ability. He's going to be every yeah, bit he's, the defensive lineman. He was that, just as unblockable. Oh my as Jackson. gosh, he was just as unblockable. He's dominant at defensive tackle for us. So, so Gio, yeah, thanks again for for making the sacrifices. Uh, just an unbelievably coachable kid. His positivity was infectious, and yeah, what a what a stud. Uh, the last kid that we're going to give this uh, Tenacious Tiger 2 award, uh, I actually, he came and found me. Um, yeah. There's one day where he showed up over in uh, offensive individuals for right. offensive line. I said, hey, like, this is a line. He said, I know, coach. Like, I'm, I'm going to be oh, an offensive lineman. I yeah. said, okay. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Um, we put him at guard. He was undersized all year. Uh, it didn't matter. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. he was fearless and – him and Gio had some great double team blocks. He had some amazing pass blocking ability, you know, picking up linebackers, mm-hmm. helping Cade. Um, and uh, that's Kelton Cook. He was fearless all year there. Um, yeah. When you when you move a wide receiver, and he's not like a outside wide receiver, he's a slot right. guy, you yeah, know, a yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. little undersized, and he comes in and plays guard for you, you know, that's just crazy. He was the one guy on our offensive line who probably every week was giving up weight to the guy he was oh blocking. yeah easily and, easily yeah and just to watch him battle week in and week out and then his coachability i mean coach yeah. conalog could talk to him every week about correcting this and correcting that and a lot of kids would be mad about that or get discouraged he was so upbeat and just yep absolutely coach i'll work on that and he did and he got better every week every and single week yep that's the that's the number one thing these kids they had two three weeks to learn right our blocking scheme mm-hmm. for the first game yeah and we came out we struggled a little bit that first half but mm-hmm. after that we put up 42 points 46 points yeah on oh that, yeah yep that exactly first game. Mm-hmm. that just doesn't happen with three brand new offensive linemen yeah. who've never played the position before yes um so that's just a huge testament to those guys i couldn't be prouder of them yeah. um i also want to give a shout out to um cade hallmark and, yep uh, hallmark and donovan yeah. um cade anchored our offensive line this yep. year um mm-hmm. you know he he was the one with the most experience in there and i know for a fact he had kelton or keaton over there hey what are we doing on this play yep. and Absolutely. I, I can almost guarantee Cade would give the correct answer so yeah that was the um, thing i mean it's 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 so great and and these kids that sacrificed and moved to positions that they weren't comfortable with are worthy of this award but it kind of Cade and Donovan and Hallmark and these guys who were willing to play offensive line, there has never in the history of football been a good team that didn't have a great offensive line. And that group that we just kind of talked about, they're going to be absolutely essential to whatever we do in the next few years. And so, yeah, just tremendous. They ended up, we we ended up scoring 40 points at least in three, four games. And you don't do that if you can't play offensive line. So those kids really... It, it just, there was time our offensive line was dominant this year. Yes, and um, that's just a testament to our – I mean, there's times where Kaveh's sitting back there for yeah. a few seconds, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just a testament to those three guys, I want to say mainly, you know, just to come in and learn that position Yeah, because it's one of the hardest positions out there. Yeah, um, and purely thankless. You're yep. never, you're never going to get the credit. You're always nope. going to get the blame, and it's so thankless and – for them to be willing to do that is was so huge to what we were trying to do on offense. So, yeah, again, just thank you guys uh, for everything that you did and all the sacrifices that you were willing to make. Yeah. So we're going to move to uh, another award. we got two or three more awards, I should say. Uh, this next mm-hmm. one is one I kind of just made up largely because we had to give this kid some kind of award. So we're going to call it the Pride Award. And the reason we called it that is because every single day in practice, this kid came out and was just a warrior. If we had a full contact drill or session, he was going to go at it. He was going to be in it over and over. Just laying the wood to people. Just, I mean, I remember one time Gavin Turner got up and he said, God, John is so physical, (laughs) you know, he just never stops. That is just the way he was and, and is and will be for the next four years. When you see John Karen Co., uh, he's, I don't know, he's shorter than Preston is probably even. He's maybe, I don't know, two foot eight or something. And you would not think that this kid is going to be a flat, dominant nose guard. And that's exactly what he was. I mean, I would hate to be a center blocking that kid. 
Because what are you going to do? He's stronger than you. He's faster than you. He's tougher than he's you. He's lower than you. He's lower than you. He's under your pads. He's going to do anything his coaches ask him to. I mean, I just I get excited even talking about him. And that's another uh, kid that moved positions there. Anytime so, we asked him, anytime yep. we, he would have played guard, receiver, punter, anything. Well, we then he did to. during when we had to go scout and we were oh, yeah. short on line. And he would go from nose guard to yep. running back, and then yep. oh, hey, we need a. We need guard. Step in here at guard. Exactly. And play there too. And when it's you, just when you have these talented kids, when you have states and all these guys, sometimes kids who John would be most teams' best running back, you know, but he's willing to become our best nose guard, right? And to just play like crazy at that position. So John, I wanted to give you this award, this Pride Award, and just to let you know that your work, your intensity, your commitment to the team was not unappreciated. We knew it. Every year, I every year, every week we every talked week, about yeah. it. I mean, we just and I, as a defensive coach, I knew that teams were never going to be able to run up the middle on us because we had Karen go in there at nose or Cade. Cade was also yep, a great Cade. nose guard, and so as a defensive coach, that just simplifies it. Teams can't run in your A gap, they can't run in your B gap because we got Jackson and Geo out there. Well, where are they going to go? Right. Can't go outside because we got Mason and Preston and and Gavin out there. So. It made coaching easy, but John, thank you for everything that you put in, the work, the tenacity. I think he was one of these guys, Coach, that he kind of set the tone for us. Like, we have to be physical and tough. and Definitely. And, yeah. uh, and so, John, that's, that's why I gave you this award, buddy, and I can't wait to watch over the next few years. Uh, you're going to have a great high school career, bud. So we have two more awards. Uh, the next one is going to be the Most Improved Player Award, and then mm -hmm. we'll finish with our, our team, team MVP. MVP. Yep. And uh, the Most Improved Player Award is, is a, to me, a great story. Um, when he first showed up over the summer, I'll be honest, I, I didn't think he was going to play that much. I mean, you know, he doesn't, doesn't strike you as he's going to be a great player or anything like that. And the uh, first uh, game against Greeley West, he didn't play very much. And then in about week two... He reached out to me on huddle and he said, "What, coach, what do I have to do to start at safety for you? And uh, I realized when he sent me that, why isn't the kid on the field? In practice, he's making play after play after play. He does everything I ask him to Knows do. Knows his responsibilities. The, one of the smartest guys yep. on the field. Part of this, Layden, is that you don't speak. You know, you got to talk more. <laughs> you can't say five words to me once a week, you know. But, and it took me a while to realize that this kid is just – as solid as anybody we have. And there were a couple of weeks where we put him in the box yep. as an outside linebacker. Windsor, Brighton. Windsor and Brighton. And I mean, the kid weighs like 40 pounds, but he just battled like crazy. And uh, he's tough. He's relentless. And the growth he made from June when I first met him to November when they stopped playing, I mean, he does, he does not make mental mistakes physically. He makes the plays that are asked of him. And you couldn't have a more coachable kid. We, uh, I made some mistakes as, a, the co as the coordinator in that Brighton game, and he was the guy who came over and said, let's get into this coverage. This will work better. And he was completely correct. So for a freshman kid in high school to see what kind of coverages we should be in, uh, that's an incredibly impressive skill set. So Layden Angelo was the most improved player. I don't know if that's the right way to characterize it, really, because I think he probably always was that. But we just didn't see it. We just didn't yep. see it, he but he... He's the kind of kid, I'll, t I'll talk about late in the next four or five years, I guarantee it. I'll tell people, make us put you on the field. That's what this kid, Layden, did. He just didn't give us a choice. We had to play him, you know. He was, ended up being our most consistent uh, safety, I think. Well, we had really good safeties, but he ended up being a consistent safety. And so, Layden, thanks for everything you did this year, buddy. You're going to be a great player for your e And a good example of... Mm -hmm. This is, we always tell our kids, you know, if you right. want to see the field, get in on scout. And right. Get in when we're asking for people yep. to rotate in um, mm -hmm. during team defense. Yep. And he was always there. He was, I don't think he ever came off during. Never. Uh, Never. Scout defense. No, he was always uh, you know, the scout so. defense's safety. And he always was making plays. Eric Meadows did that too, by the way. Yep. So. Eric Meadows. There's a lot of There's kids. A lot of kids. I mean, that's the thing. That's why it's not participation trophies. You guys are just all worthy of of being acknowledged. I hope you know that. But Layden, most improved player, love you to death, bud. Can't wait to see you in the future, my man. So our last uh, award is the team MVP. Coach, I'll let you talk about this a little bit. Um, we were what four and one at the end of the year. 
I don't know what our season is like without this kid. I think we still probably win most of our yeah, games. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have some good people behind him, but but my this, God, this mm-hmm. kid is just heads and tails. Um, he's just a stud. He's a specimen. Yeah, he is a yeah. specimen, mm-hmm. and he put in. He's put in the work. Yeah, that you can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it made it easy to just hand the ball off. You know, especially when we lose our quarterback. You know, yeah. We yeah. lose our quarterback, and we got to be able to run the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, and he did just that. I, I don't know how many tackles he broke. It's probably oh close gosh. to a million. Probably, mm-hmm. you know. So. Oh, it's amazing. Um, but, yeah. Uh, you got something you want to add? You know, he's he's going to be one of Erie's great running backs in the history of the program. I have no doubt about that. He was also just an unbelievable defensive player at linebacker just tackle after tackle after tackle after tackle I we he was one of these guys we didn't know where to use him really because he's kind of a small little guy and and then somebody told me you know states is a stud like back in June and July I'm like that little guy is a player (laughs) and then the pads came on it's like oh my god he's the terminator he uh this is the only kid I've ever had as a coach he came up to me and he said we have got to practice harder (laughs) Right. We got to have more structured practices. I mean, that was the kind of stuff he was demanding of his teammates, of his coaches, and that's why Erie football is going to get to some some heights here in the next few years. I have no doubt about it. When you have kids who are demanding that kind of excellence of themselves, of the coaches, of their teammates, everybody elevates as a result of that. I mean, the next day I was like, "He's dang right. We got to have more. We got to practice harder and get after it more." So, and he was our kick returner. He I mean, if we put him on kickoff, he'd go and make the tackle. I mean, there was just nothing in the game if we asked him to do that he couldn't do Pass well. block. You know, Pass block, yeah, exactly. We moved him from outside to inside backer, and he mm-hmm. took that yep. and just ran with it. There's times where I'm pretty sure he blitzed himself, you know, a few yep. times. But it's yep. just because he knew what was coming before anybody else did. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, he's just a ridiculous at- athlete, you know, incredibly smart football yep. player. Mm-hmm. Um Never wanted to come out of the game. Yes, 100%. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I feel like if we took him out, he would just be angry. His know? own biggest critic, too, you know. Yep. If he made a mistake, you didn't have to tell him. He came off and said, that was my bad. Uh, I want to tell the State's family a few terrible things about the state of Florida, if you guys are listening. <laughs> uh, Florida's really hot. It's really humid. A lot of gators down there. Yeah, I've heard there's really a lot of gang violence. And Erie, Colorado has none of those things. So we know States is here to stay. Um it's going to be an exciting three years with you, buddy, and we're all looking forward to watching it. Uh, I, again, I just, he was, he's the kind of kid we're going to look back on and be proud that we got to coach him, you know, that yep. we got to be there when it started. Um, just a tremendous, tremendous football player and kid and person. I mean, he takes all AP classes. He's probably smarter than me. You're not smarter than me, States, but he's a smart kid, too. <laughs> you probably know. smarter than me. So. Uh, no. <laughs> but, again, our team MVP this year, for sure, yep. was uh, Lincoln State. Lincoln State, yep. And uh, thank you for everything that you did, Lincoln, the leadership that you showed. That's the other thing. He was an incredible practice player, you know. I mean, he just, every time there was, we needed a spark of energy in practice, he was the guy bringing it. And, and he demands that of himself, and it brings it out of everybody else. So, again, team MVP to, to States, and uh, thank you for all that you did, Lincoln. So those are our awards. I mean, I literally, if it seems like we did a lot, it's because that was the thing. We had to cut it down, yeah. you know. I mean, we didn't even get to talk about some of these kids. I mean, Mason Calgill was incredible all year. And Kate Gavin Coleman, Turner. Gavin Turner. I've Darian Bruce DeMonte, Donovan Mann. You know, and then kids like uh, Joe Green and Ethan Mueller and kids who got way, way better as the year went on. It was such a privilege to coach this group. And I hope that you don't hear us say you didn't get an award, then uh, that you're not absolutely essential to what we wanted to do this year and to the program moving forward. To the program moving forward, Exactly. Hope all of you understand how appreciated you are by your coaching staff. You know, I mean, Austin Jameson got a big tackle in the last game. You know, I mean, it uh, might, Randolph had Michael Randolph had an interception. Close the game out exactly. Of the I mean, so stay the course, you guys. Some of you guys who maybe didn't have the season that you were wanting, that can change, right? Nobody looks back and says, "Well, I was a great freshman football player," right? You want to talk about the kind of varsity football yep. player that you were, and that is still ahead of you guys. And the challenge that I would make to you. 
I don't know what the next few months are going to look like. Coronavirus is screwing everything up. But get in the weight room, lift weight weights. Room, weight room, weight room. Exactly. Get stronger, all of you. Even the Cowgill twins, you guys can still keep lifting weights, right? I mean, all of you guys get stronger. Stay together as a group. Stay in touch with one another. Um, if we not, if we're not back in the building in school, make sure you're talking to each other, you know, and and staying in contact, and bring the passion that you guys had this year to that team as a sophomore, right? and make the varsity program better. And uh, I just can't wait to see what you guys do with the next three years of your career. Uh, and to the parents, one more time, thank yeah, you guys. Thank you guys. I mean, meals on the bus and being totally flexible and just, I mean, practice is getting canceled on Thursday and then being started again on Friday. That that took a lot of patience on your part. And yep. uh, can't say enough about having I mean, to bring them to oh my gosh. practices yeah. at mm -hmm. three thirty. You know, that's tough. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. so. and just we just thank you guys so much for your flexibility, your support. I know as a coaching staff, we felt really supported, and yep. uh, and that's amazing because not a lot of football coaches have that. So so thank you guys, thank you parents, thank you players. I miss you guys. I wish we could see you in person. I wish this was happening in person, but uh, at least we got to do this and. Uh, and we appreciate all of you. Coach, anything you want to say here? Uh, no. Um, have a Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas, people. All right. Tires on me, Tires on three! One, two, three, Tires!